Welcome back everyone to another episode of Talking Threads, the textile innovation show with me, Jessica Owen. And me, Fiona Harron. Our sponsor for this week's show is Innovate, WTIN's five-day virtual event that connects innovators from across the textile and apparel industry. The event will take place between the 25th and the 29th of October, and it will provide visitors and exhibitors with a chance to find suppliers, evaluate the competitive environment, attend educational programmes and much more. If this sounds like an event that interests you, or if you'd like any further information, then please click the link below. Now on to the show and in this week's news, spun laid and unwoven's producer Av Gol has partnered with textile innovation company Algin to develop new sustainable algae powered technology. The parties will first focus on the use of Algin's unique environmental solution for modifying the aesthetic qualities of materials with Av Gol's ongoing commitment to sustainable polyolefin based spun bond and melt blown fabrics. The companies have been working together since 2020 and have proven the algae and colorant technology in proof of concept and prototyping phases. The partners are now preparing to enter the next stages of the product introduction pipeline. Elsewhere, the material science brand Pangaea has partnered with Connected Products innovator Eon to power digital passports for its products in a move that will help accelerate greater transparency, traceability and circularity in the industry and inspire responsible consumer choices. Powered by a QR code, the digital passports bring to life each garment's journey from the product's origin through to its purchase, transportation and aftergear, which includes provenance information and mapping of the dyeing, production and distribution facilities. The digitised product experience will also enable Pangaea to update its customers in real time as the breadth of its impact reporting evolves. Finally, researchers at Zhejiang University and Westlake University in China have created a reversible textile to stay comfortable outdoors by trapping warmth in the cold and reflecting it during hot weather or while generating small amounts of electricity. To achieve this, the team made a layered fabric made from porous fibrous polymers. To trap in the warmth, they coated the heat inside in zinc and copper nanoparticles to absorb solar energy and keep in thermal radiation from the body. And to release the heat, the team placed a hierarchically porous structure on the cooling side to reflect sunlight and dissipate human body radiation. Now moving on, earlier this week I caught up with David Stevens, the CEO at the Textile Service Association in the UK, to talk about the organisation's newly launched scheme for recycling textiles used in the hospitality industry. So the Textile Service Association has just launched a scheme for recycling textiles that are used in the hospitality industry. Um, before we get onto that, do you mind just explaining a bit about the association and, and what you actually do, please? Yeah, we're the Trade Association for the Commercial Laundry Sector, which services about 90% of the hospitality industry with um, hotels, with laundry services. And then also you've got the healthcare sector and the workwear sector. So we have membership of about 160 sites and 70 actual laundry companies. Okay, right. And so going back to this scheme then, do you mind just sort of painting a picture as to how much textile waste is generated in this industry? I mean, how big is the problem here? I mean, textile waste is the end of the process. I mean, we will, we service about 90% of the UK hospitality with textile linens. Most of those are washed 100, 150 times, but it's what you then do with the product at the end of life. Um, and at the moment, about 30 million pieces become end of life during um, a, an annual a year. So we're looking at how we deal with those 30 million pieces. Lots of laundries already have in place um, reuse or recycling processes, but they're generally going to the rag trade where they get cut up into wipers and used once. So it's really just one extra use. We've already washed it 100 times, it gets one more use. So we're looking at the recycling element where they can get another 150 uses. Okay. Um, and then finally, my last question is, if you do manage to create this sort of ecosystem um, to recycle hospitality textiles, um, do you think the industry will embrace it? Will they be excited about it? Yeah, I mean, we, we already use the phrase, you know, circular economy, and we're looking to certify ourselves as an industry and as operators as a circular economy. The one missing piece was this end of life recycling. So we already wash things 100 times, but it's what we do with end of life. So I think the industry will embrace it. 
Um, so far, we've had 100% buy-in from membership we've engaged with, which you know is incredible. So nobody has said no yet. And in a way, why would you? Um, because it, it just makes great sense. So we, we think we'll get 100% buy-in. Um, UK hospitality are fully supported. It does feel like we're pushing out an open door. I've had no negative feedback from anybody yet. Um, so yeah, we think we'll get a buy-in and we think we can make it happen. What an interesting scheme. Uh, most recycling related news that is announced usually concerns the fashion and apparel industry. So it's great to hear that efforts have been made to recycle other textile products. Yes, I completely agree, especially considering that the statistic whereby over 30 million textile items in the hospitality industry are thrown away every year. So if the TSA can get this scheme up and running, I'm sure that it will make a significant impact. Well, now it's time for a short video from this week's sponsor, Innovate. And after that, we'll be spe speaking to Jorgen Eisinger of Lensing. Welcome back. Our next guest is Jorgen Eisinger, Vice President of Global Management Nonwovens at Lensing. The group's VSL brand has introduced the first carbon neutral lyocell fibre for the nonwovens industry. Hi Jorgen, thanks so much for joining me today. So can you start by introducing carbon neutral VSL branded fibres and explain how this fibre innovation will benefit the nonwovens industry? Thank you very much for, for giving me the chance also to talk about our newest development. Lansing is committed to transforming the women's industry with a greater transparency and sustainability. We have recently introduced the industry first carbon neutral VSL branded fiber with a net zero footprint. To reduce indirect emission, a company can either avoid using such a material or utilize its value chain to deliver new climate-friendly solutions. With our new carbon neutral VSL lyosol fibers, we can help our partners and customers to, to reduce their emission impact, thus encouraging the industry to become more environmental friendly. Already starting in June, our fibers are available as certified carbon neutral products with a carbon footprint reduced to net zero according to carbon neutral protocol. These fibers are also reinforced our commitment to the science based targets initiative around reduction of total global carbon emission, a quest driven by the UN Paris Agreement. Goods produced with carbon neutral VSL lyocell fibers will benefit from a specialty developed VSL climate care logo. What does this mean? When consumers see products with the climate care logo on the packaging, they will be able to recognize that the product is made of biocell, lyocell fibers, which have a neutral impact on our climate. This will not only give them confidence about making more informed, eco-conscious purchase decision, but also reassure that they are taking a proactive step to tackle climate change significantly our commitment to offer climate-friendly solutions to limit global warming, reduce its carbon footprint, and engage with partners along the supply chain to provide more sustainable and women solution. VSL brand will continue to collaborate with our partners and customers on developing new and climate-friendly sourcing and product solution, influencing systematic change in business operations and supply chain practices for a positive climate impact. Thank you. And can you just expand, you know, from a business aspect, how has Lensing tackled carbon emissions? As an industry, the mindset shift towards sustainability comes at the time when it needed most and companies like us are pioneering real change towards to achieve carbon neutrality. Our carbon neutral goal forms a crucial part of our wider commitment to combating climate change, 
whilst achieving carbon net zero may sound really ambitious. Behind this undertaking are actionable steps that are part of the science-based targets commitment. We have been also a front runner signing the United Nations Fashion Industry Charter and have recently been received an A rating on the CDP, a global environmental non-profit organization. Last year, we introduced our carbon zero tensile branded glyosel and modal fibers for the Lansing textile industry. We developed a reduced engage offset approach designed to move our tensile brand closer to completely carbon neutrality. Our climate care initiative is also guided by our principle of care. What does care mean? We commit to providing climate friendly solution to limit global warming. We act to offer carbon neutral fiber, which contributes to a better climate. We reduce carbon footprint and engage with our partners along the supply chain to provide more sustainable movement solution. I like how Lensing is taking a lead there on encouraging the whole industry to become more environmentally friendly, reinforcing that driving change is an industry-wide effort. Yes, and this development highlights the importance of science-backed sustainable innovations that meet this increasing need for transparency across the supply chain. Well, that's all we have time for today, but remember to join us again next week where we'll be joined by some new special guests and have the latest industry news and innovations ready to share. We'll see you then.